If you're in the market for a premium luxury SUV, and I do mean premium, you know, like six figures plus, it's almost impossible. In fact, I believe that it is impossible to not consider looking into a Land Rover Range Rover. That's going to be very annoying. The Range Rover Sport likes me and it's going to unlock, unlock, lock, unlock repeatedly throughout the video. So that's just the way it's going to be. Okay. Um, what I'm saying is that, yes, you can always shop over at BMW and at Audi and Mercedes Benz and Infiniti and Lexus and stuff like that. But when it comes to comparing everything that's available on the market, it's, it's impossible really, again, impossible to not compare or use Range Rover and Land Rover as a benchmark. Yes, the product isn't the most reliable. Well, you would just get that out of the way right away. But if you consider for a moment that, you know, maybe with the exception of Lexus, though, the V6 turbo, things have happened. I think that's solved, though. Um, but if you look at the BMWs, any of the German automakers, none of them are reliable. None of them, period. I mean, Something just recently happened to me and anyway, point is we can remove that from the equation when you're in this price range, this prestige level. Because look, what you're gonna get in a Range Rover is quite possibly the best of all the worlds. The Sport is a, is a funny one because unlike the big Rover or any of the Land Rovers, this one is at the crossroads, well, kind of like the Velar, but say this is a slightly smaller version, as you very well know. This is at the crossroads of immense off-road capabilities and tremendous on-road abilities with nearly all the luxury you can possibly even imagine. Which is why this kind of makes it one of the most desirable in Range Rover and Land Rover's lineup. I mean, if in my area, in the greater Montreal area, there are five Range Rover Sports for one Velar. The big Rover, well, that's a different story, different price range. And I totally get it. I'm, I've driven this on a number of occasions. And the first generation really rocked my world. <laughs> and every subsequent, this is the third generation, by the way, all new introduced for the 2023 model year, uh, just over a year and a half ago, give or take. And it's doing the exact same thing. And if you're watching this video, you're, not, you're looking for perhaps, if you're in the market for this and not just curious about what the heck they have, why, why does Motor Illustrated have this guy <laughs> reviewing vehicles? Um, you want justification for wanting to buy a Range Rover. And it's, it's never a bad idea. I am very partial to the BMW X5 for a number of reasons. But nothing says premium SUV like Range Rover. I mean, in my mind, and I'll end the introduction on this, is boring, overly long introduction. This, to me, carries more prestige, more value, more tangible legacy, something or rather, than any Bentley Bentayga. Definitely not a Ferrari Puro Sangue, way, Puro Sangue or, or the Rolls Royce Cullinan. This is where you go for the cream of premium SUVs. Anyhow, in the next video, in the next few minutes, we'll do the usual typical walk arounds. There's a lot of nice things about this model. And uh, then we're gonna take it for a little drive. So please hang in there. Physically among all Range Rovers, not Land Rovers that separate the two, I've always thought that the Sport was the better looking. The Velar is, is uniquely styled, but the, the proportions on this thing, especially now in its third generation, the way the designers have cleaned it up with the, that tail bar, a uh, tail light bar across the back. It's so clean and it's so simple. You know, sometimes when you over design things, it's just not very, very nice. Uh, this is definitely not the case with the Sport. And same goes for the uh, Big Rover too. Front end is very reminiscent of the previous generation Range Rover Sport, but it's just been cleaned up in such a way that, I don't know, it's just fantastic. And normally I would complain about the black and white combination, making it look, you know, like a rental style, but uh, that's not the case here, definitely not. Pricing in the US for the base SE, 
is $83,700 and the top trim autobiography P550 plug-in hybrid is $118,700. In Canada, the base model is a dynamic SE, so we don't have a lower trim as they do in the USA. They have also a dynamic SE, but uh, that's not their base model. Anyhow, the dynamic SE P400 is $109,600 and the autobiography P550 with a plug-in hybrid is $141,800 to start. Uh, base equipment, I mean, obviously it's completely loaded. You have 21 inch wheels, LED lighting all over the place, panoramic sunroof, Meridian audio, 13.1 inch touchscreen, 13.7 digital IP. I mean, it's all there. My tester is a mid-trim dynamic HSC P400, meaning it's not a plug-in hybrid that I'm going to review in the future because I'm very curious. So this one starts at $114,550. Nothing is free anymore, my friends. Uh, and included with that, you have soft closed doors, probably one of my absolute favorite premium features, 22 inch wheels. Um, but uh, my tester here has a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of options. One of them being the, where are we gonna find it? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I know this is nice. Yeah, there you go. 23 inch wheels, which are extraordinary. Let's just put it that way. I have a full non-leather interior. You'd think you'd pay less for that, but no, you pay more. I'll show it to you. It's gorgeous. It's got the blackout package, which explains all the black stuff. It's got a rear entertainment system, the massaging seats, uh, and a two-speed transfer case, which is not standard. You have to pay extra. It's not much, a couple hundred bucks. Anyway, as it sits before you, my friends, $139,000. But when you consider, say, the price of a Genesis GV80 Coupe, um, you know, it's $10,000 less than the base HSE P400. I don't know. Anyhow, um, let's uh, complete the walk around here. So this reveals 903 liters of boot space, which is really usable. I mean, right now, because I'm dumb, standard dynamic air suspension, by the way. So I have it in the off-road setting, which gives you all of 11 inches of ground clearance. So this is serious off-roader if you really want to, but so it also helps with the lift over. I mean, now it's high, but the point is 903 liters of boot space, very accessible, it's very wide, good depth, and no storage here. But one day, if I win some serious money, I am going to buy four of those spare wheels and put them on my Range Rover to go off-roading because you don't go off-roading with these 23s and these Scorpion Zero tires. Power door handles, which so far have been good, cooperative, and you get an idea here. This is not leather. It's like a um, soft tech, synthetic, fluffy, beautiful, beautiful material. Oh, and this also has the top Meridian signature audio system. I, f I think this is like a $45 to $5,000 option. Um, and yeah, so yes, I know it's dirty. It's the kids. What can I tell you? Uh, but it is the softest, most plush, most pleasant stuff I've ever touched. It is amazing. So there's the rear entertainment system. The kids are enjoying that very, very much. Um, you could, a lot of junk in here. You could sit another human between the two seats. Uh, even a teenager, I think, would fit in there. Uh, power rear seats, by the way. So the setting is right there. It just reclines and folds. As we move up front, uh, same, same deal. Uh, the only thing is that you can see it's kind of like, it, it picks up skin stuff. I don't know if you, if you see what I mean. It's kind of, you see the marks where your elbows would sit, but you know, that's you, when you buy one, something like this, you have someone, you pay someone to fix all that. But the seats, yeah, massaging. Oh, by the way, the controls are right there and you have the memory positions. Um, insanely comfortable. It, it, they're the softest, but most supportive seats I think I've experienced in a long, long time. You think it's cheap because it's not leather, but see, I can't stop massaging it. <clears throat> I'm fine. Um, all right, let's just get in there. We're gonna start it up. So 13 inch, 13.7 inch digital IP. It's quite wide in fact, but everything shows up there. There's nothing much to show uh, or to display. There's your heads up display that you get in here. And it's the same thing with the top of the dash. It's a lovely soft material. It's just fantastic. I wanna, whatever. Um, so the touchscreen display. In, in typical JLR fashion, it's simply very complex. I mean, this is, let's just say you open this is your home screen, 
and you can just toggle this way through a whole bunch of menus you can also go through this menu which is a little bit it's always kind of the same you really have to pay attention to what you're doing when you're doing that but uh, there's your right height control yes i didn't mean to do that now i'm gonna go uh, <laughs> doing this through the phone is always tough um, so your drive modes are right there too and uh, off-road modes there you go all your off-road modes i mean it's it's all here it's all there you just have to remember where all of it is and that's you know and this is another like a quick setup for various menus i mean there is so much in here it's completely insane but you do get used to it you know at least for there you go <laughs> For, you know, HVAC settings, it, it's it's quite nice. I, I have to, It's nice. There's a learning curve, but you get into it, over it, whatever. Um, decent storage here with your uh, wireless phone charger. This, uh, one of the options in this model is a little fridge down there, which is kind of neat. Door bins are decent. Uh, and visibility, oh yeah, and a headliner too. This is an option as well. It's so, everything is so soft in here, it's insane. Um, Meridian speakers, more stuff. I told you about that Meridian signature. There you go. Uh, I love how discreet some of the grills are, as opposed to being all blingy and all that stuff. And visibility is actually quite good, thanks to this. The pillar, not that big, uh, but that truly helps. I mean, this is a, a gorgeous place to be. You know, control steering wheel, heated steering wheel there, and there's your volume and all that. Anyhow, let's uh, take this P400 for a drive now. The secret basically that's extremely loud i just want to say I mean, it's a cool feature i guess but it's extremely loud i remember saying the exact same thing for other vehicles that have these types of powered handles and i just don't understand why they have to be so freaking loud okay uh, the secret to every range rover's drive at least in the sport is the standard dynamic air suspension um, if it wasn't for it, especially with these 23 inch wheels, I think a ride would be intolerable, absolutely intolerable. These wheels with the tires, with air in them, probably weigh, I don't know, 80 to 100 pounds per corner. And most average suspensions cannot handle that kind of unsprung weight. But this is a new platform and the air suspension just together, and I'm still in off-road mode now, I haven't lowered it yet. Um, the ride is exceptional it is so it's like the seats it's plush it's comfortable it's luxurious and and if you get done with it like i like to do and you want to see how much uh, i shouldn't say this but you know you want to see if you can make the scorpion zeros 285 squeal the range rover will play along with you thanks to this suspension and i guess the tires i uh, look it's yeah the comfort level is immense other than the freaking powered door handles it's relatively quiet in here although it might not show it but i'm doing about 85 kilometers an hour uh and it's not whisper quiet but it's tolerably so even on the highway at speeds of 100 and you know um very very nice it's it's premium plush luxurious in here as you would expect it um powering uh, the p400 is a boosted six-cylinder engine three liters with mild hybrid technology so effectively all of these models now have electrified powertrains so mild hybrid or plug-in hybrid and eventually electric which i assume that's in the big rover uh, i assume that will trickle down into other models in the future but output here is 395 horsepower it's the same uh, straight six you get in a defender and the other models uh, which puts out 395 horsepower, 406 pound-feet of torque from 2,000 RPM all the way up to 5,000, I think. So surprisingly, this 2,300 kilo, aka, what does that make? Like a 5,200 pound SUV hit 60 from a standstill in 5.7 seconds, which is pretty damn good. In fact, it's really, really good. I think... I think the onboard computer is lying to me because it says that I'm averaging 11.8 liters per hundred kilometers, which doesn't seem fathomable in any way whatsoever. But let's just say 12 liters per hundred kilometers. If that's the case, start stop obviously, then this is impressive. 
I still don't believe it, but whatever. Let's just say 12 liters per 100 kilometers. That's really nice. Um, brakes feel great. There's nothing to say. Steering is it's actually heavy through the drive modes. All of these things can be calibrated and changed, but I've effectively left everything in auto and just let it be and do its own thing because I mean, the power is there. The ride comfort is there and the performance, apparently the efficiency too. So why mess with the good thing? And it really is a good thing. I almost hate saying that this is a nice SUV, but the reality is that it is a really, really nice SUV. Not that it would take me away from the X5 that I do like very much, but definitely this over Q8, over um, a Lexus GX, and a number of other premium SUVs in the 110 to 150 thousand dollar price range. So much money, and yet it's not that much money anymore, which I can't wrap my brain around. But this thing is extraordinary, and you do not buy it, right? You lease it and you flip it as soon as you can for a brand new one too. Why not? Anyhow, that's it. This 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 thing is fantastic. I really really like it. Thank you.